Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Well, I'm glad to be with you today, and I hope you've been with us the last three days. We've been on one subject, basically, so I hope that you have been a part of that because we've been talking about Charles Chris Meyer's book, Antichrist, How to Identify the Coming Imposter. And it really has uh, been interesting as we've tried to cover the material in this book. Could not be more timely. There are things happening right now in the world today that were not happening when I talked to him just a few weeks ago. So there's no question that we're living in the end time and it's going to, I believe, heat up very quickly. And I love when Jesus said, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning these times. And so he tells us what to expect. And it's going to be really serious, going to be bad. But in the middle of it all, he says, look up for your redemption draws nigh. So this is the fourth day. There's one more day. And so I hope you've been able to see all of it. I don't know when it thing has been more timely than what we've been doing on this. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make a Hawaiian chicken. I think there's a lot of ways to try to come up with that taste of Hawaiian chicken. And Stephanie has a few question marks about this. So we'll see. She likes it. If she likes it, it's going to be good. No question about it. And in the middle of all this, as I reminded you yesterday, really need to know the promises of God. We, we're living in very intense times. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have sleeping problems and all. And it's nice to know and all these things that are going on and distur very disturbing things and everything that's happening in the news and around the world, and we get it immediately, it's good to know the absolute rock bottom truth. And you'll find 199 promises of God that are yea and amen. They are immovable. They are forever, ever true and enduring. And they can be a great comfort to you right now during this time. So... If you would like to have this little book, it's for any gift to the program because you know your gifts keep us on the air. Amazingly, it costs money to, you know, our camera people like to be paid and cameras are expensive and equipment in our, uh, all over this building, very expensive. And so you help us with that. It's uh, well, money well spent. So thank you so much. 1-800-229-0059 for the credit card, debit card people, and Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, for those of us who still write checks, because we do not bend. No. Nope. Hello, hello, hey. hello. How are you today? Very good. Okay, we need to get this boiling okay, a little listen. bit. Okay, I, I had a question mark about this, and then Brooke changed my mind. This is a can of crushed pineapple. What did Brooke do? So Brooke is our floor director. Because this is ketchup and pineapple. And I was like, who thought to put ketchup and pineapple together? But then she was like, do you like pineapple on your pizza? And I do. And that's pineapple and a red sauce. So so maybe Brooke has saved changed, the day. She changed maybe. my whole thought process on it. So I'm not going to taste it making a face. So that was ketchup. That was a half a cup of ketchup. I'm going to put in three tablespoons of brown sugar. Like, who came up with this recipe? It's so interesting. Which our brown sugar, I wish you could have seen Arthlane Rippy trying to break apart our brown <laughs> sugar this morning. It was quite yeah, the Yeah, it, it got kind of hard. Hard. And I'm cutting up just a little bit of uh, green onion for garnish. When and I taste. And it. taste, yes. And three tablespoons of soy sauce. And then I have three tablespoons of cornstarch and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And we're going to mix this and all this, together. That's it. This that's is it. Sweet. And chicken. You're going to spray. Have to be sprayed? Yes, please. Always spray the pan. Always. I got this on high. You want it to boil. Yeah. And then you want it to like uh, slowly boil for two minutes. Yeah, when I was making this morning, I just was very curious. So curious about who came mm -hmm. up with this. Now, it calls for chicken breasts. Arthlene Rippey would prefer tenders, so oh, we do yes. tenders. Oh, yes. Do you know how big those breasts are? And then yeah. you cut them in half. Listen. So this is... Yeah, I just went to Sam's Club last weekend, and I loaded up on chicken breasts. And then I sliced them uh -huh. all in half, and I bagged froze them, them. And froze them, yes. So we are set up with chicken. Okay, so... So that's kind of a big dish for, for that, that little much. Bit, but, but, so you just let this boil, okay? 
Now, now we can't use that fork. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Don't give me some. But you're going to taste it, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you would pour this over, and then you cook it at 350 for about 45 minutes, but you want to make sure the chicken's done. Yes. Which she always overcooks the and chicken I overcook because it. she wants I it I overcook done. any kind yeah. of chicken. Yeah. Um, but I would it say smells you, good. you would want a little rice with this, maybe. Oh, that would be really good. Okay, so you're going to get that out. I'm letting this boil. Super simple, and I hope it tastes as good as pineapple pizza because I'll be happy. Okay. It. I'm tasting, right? Mm hmm. That's lovely. Look at that. Oh, this is going to be wonderfully yeah, you, hot. You would put a. I do rice with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so here's a pretty. Yes, that's a pretty. Let me turn this down so we don't burn it because it has. And a lot then of sugar. you just. You just pour it over there. Yep. That's all you do. Okay. This is wonderfully hot. So, Is it tender? Very. Mm -hmm. Well, that pineapple juice is going to tenderize the chicken. Yeah. It's... For sure. Mm -hmm. Ooh. She just burned her tonsils and her tongue. And... It's good. Is it? It's so much better than I anticipated. It's very so flavorful. You, you... It's very sweet. Mm -hmm. Very, very sweet. You mm -hmm. definitely want to buffer with it, rice or noodles or something. How would you kind of modify that if you didn't want quite so sweet? Is it all the pineapple juice? Because it's all the that, pineapple. There's not yeah, much well, it's brown ketchup, sugar in it, which has sugar. Yeah. It's brown sugar, so it's yeah. a sweet dish, but it's yeah. delicious. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you. It's really it. good. Yeah. Yes. And um, boy, what could be easier? You you could have that all Super put together. Simple. Before you go to work, when you get home, shove it in the oven and. And listen, this is one of those recipes. You make a double batch mm -hmm. and you freeze half of mm -hmm. it because this would warm up nicely. Mm -hmm. I'm really working on meal prepping and freezer cooking right now, shelf cooking, to try to use everything we possibly can. Yeah, and I appreciate you telling our viewers that because that's the way she thinks. This is what she thinks in finances and everything. She's looking ahead. We've got to figure out ways to save money, and mm -hmm. not wasting food is a big one. Mm -hmm. And then having things prepared for a night, say you got busy and you didn't have time to get anything out, for, mm -hmm. but you have something ready, you, mm -hmm. you just need to stick in the oven. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper than going out and picking something up at the drive And you know, I think Americans shoot from the hip a lot. Oh, yeah. And you that spend a money. lot more, a lot more money when you do Cost that. Cost money to shoot from the hip. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Last minute stuff. Mm -hmm. So, okay. If you want this recipe, and um, then you can get creative with the rest of the meal. Yep. I, I mentioned rice, but there's probably a lot of other things sure. you could do. Sure. It's called um, Hawaiian chicken. I'm not sure that we've done anything much easier than this, you know, to come out with a real entree. Mm -hmm. So, there's. A Many ways you can get this recipe, so choose the one you want and uh, make note of that. We'll get it right out to you, and then after that, we'll have the fourth interview with Chuck Chris Meyer, um, the most timely. I mean, it landed right on time to talk about the end times, and it's time to think about your soul, your condition with the Lord. Very, very important. So I think you're going to really get a lot out of this interview today, so stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, Chuck, my head is spinning. <laughs> We've covered a lot of territory, but yes, you know, have. I really believe that we have some wonderful viewers out there that a lot of this brand new material I'm to sure. them. And, and last time I had on a wonderful prophecy evangelist, because God gave us specific gifts yes, in the yes, church. And yes. sometimes you have a musician in, and sometimes you have somebody to teach on finance and all. And those uh, prophecy guys are real. My dad used to have them in with some regularity mm -hmm. and they're few and far between now. But uh, last time we kind of closed down for a few minutes, we I said we would talk about the rapture okay. and uh, the place of Jerusalem. It's interesting how 
in America, depending on who's in office, they bounce Israel around so much. Right. Uh, I go back to reading that uh, Roosevelt wasn't real friendly to Israel, but Harry Truman came in and he was. He was. And uh, of course, Donald Trump moved the embassy back to Jerusalem. Yeah. And uh, many presidents kept it out of there. That's correct. So Because they were afraid. Chicken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they they talked big, but they were they, afraid. They knew, maybe they knew just enough about end times that uh, they didn't want to get involved or whatever. I think, I think they were not as concerned about the end times as they should have been. And so they were more concerned about our now times than... Than God's but viewpoint. were they afraid of the ones who kept Israel at arm's length when we've had presidents who brought them closer? Uh, was it fear? Partly. It's also because of an inbred antipathy throughout history toward the Jewish people, mm -hmm. toward Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we were going to talk about the rapture. Yes, ma'am. It has other names, doesn't it? Second coming and well, some people would say the rapture away. and the second coming are two different things. Mm -hmm. uh, the word rapture doesn't appear in the Bible. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Paul uses this term "catching away" in Thessalonians, and that's where we get the term rapture. Uh, let me just speak briefly to that, and this may not set well with some folk. Mm -hmm. When I grew up, I grew up in a pastor's home. I heard many, many evangelists, strong conviction of heart and so on. And uh, I don't want to name drop, so I won't mention some of them are very, very prominent. Uh, the concept of a pre-tribulation rapture uh, was predominant. About 15 years ago, as I studied the scriptures, I came to the conclusion that that could not possibly be true. A pre-trib rapture couldn't possibly be true. And the reason why, one of the reasons why is, for one thing... I think thing, you just opened a can of worms. Go ahead. I know. For one thing, there is no specific scripture in the Bible that suggests it. Zero. Secondly, if it were true, all of the warnings of scripture to Christians would be meaningless. Null and void. Null and void. They'd be null and void. So the, the whole concept of this book would be meaningless. Because we're going to miss it. Because you'd be missing it. And so there would be people out there, perhaps, who have been listening to us and say, well, I don't need to be concerned about that because I'm out of here. So you hear many pastors, almost in a braggadocia kind of a way, say, we don't have to be concerned about that. We're out of here. Oh, really? I've heard that. Yeah, you hear okay, that. Okay, let me go back and make this plain. There's a, in the church, there's, there are beliefs that uh, pre-tribulation, that the, rap, the church will be taken out before, before it gets any troubles. really bad. Some believe mid-trib right. in the middle, and some believe that we'll go through the whole thing. That's correct. So if we're not pre-trib, mm -hmm. where do you place it? All right. That brings us to a definition of tribulation. Mm -hmm. Tribulation is a word that comes from the Greek word flip, flipsis, which means pressure. How many people feel like they're under pressure right mm -hmm. now? Are we under continuing pressure? We're under tribulation right now. Now, is this the tribulation? That I cannot say. But when you look at the Bible, there is no such thing as a seven-year period called the tribulation. It's just not there. It's created in our minds or theologies by taking what is called the 70th week of Daniel, mm -hmm. a uh, seven-year period, and conflating that with the word tribulation, and therefore people conclude there's a seven-year tribulation period. But the Bible doesn't refer to it there that way. There are millions who believe that. Yeah. Now, what the Bible does say, Jesus is the one who talked about a great tribulation. Yes. A great tribulation. I used to sing a song with that term in it. Yeah, okay. So, I believe in a tribulation. I even believe that there is a seven-year period. 
even though the Bible doesn't specifically mm -hmm. say that that's the tribulation mm -hmm. period. But it does say that there's a great tribulation and that when that happens, the world is going to be in such unbelievable chaos and violence. And the deception is so monumental that if it were possible, even the, even the elect could not, the remnant elect could not be saved. But they will be. Now, you mentioned a pre-trib, that's before a seven-year period. A mid-trib, that would be before the Great Tribulation unfolds. And then a post-trib, after it was all over. But there's another fourth choice. And that is what is called the pre-wrath version, which is somewhat like the mid-trib. But it's saying that the real thing that God tells Christians that we're not going to have to endure is the wrath of God. It doesn't say we're not going to have an unendurable Okay, wrath where does that fit in? That, that would wrath fit of in God. Uh, somewhere around, if you go to the book of Revelation, you would find in chapter 6 at the end of the chapter uh, where the wrath of God begins to be poured out. Now, on whom is the wrath of God to be poured out? Paul says, on the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. On the, child, the people who diss God's authority, His word, His will, and His ways. Mm. Well, that's half the church today. Well, Because we're engaged in rebellion. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you don't obey, you're dissing His word. Mm -hmm. So that's why this is so critical. We need to come to grips and be shaken in the spirit of our hearts and our minds. This is about the heart. It's not about information. It's not about fascination. It's serious. It's serious business. I sat with one of the prominent publishers of our time this week, earlier. We were to have a 15 or 20 minute interview. By the time we were through, we were three hours. Mm -hmm. The person was so shaken by the emphasis, not on information, mm -hmm. but on transformation. And he came That's to the, the word. He came to the great realization, we aren't ready. Mm -hmm. And it's got to change my life and what I'm doing in the publishing industry. Praise That's the Lord what the book that. is about. Yes. The book is about me. It's about you. Mm -hmm. It's about why we aren't ready and how easily we are set up to be mm -hmm. seduced and to succumb. Mm -hmm. And that's why all the warnings of Scripture are to believers. Of course. People get ready. Mm -hmm. Jesus is coming. These are the words that I say almost every day at the end of my radio program. People get ready. Jesus is coming soon will be coming home. We're to prepare the way of the Lord for history's final hour. And that hour is approaching rapidly. Don't say to yourself, we're not going to go through any hard times. Give me a break. Mm -hmm. How about those 20 Christians that were lined up over there in Libya along the shores of the Mediterranean and had their heads mm -hmm. sliced off in public? Did they get raptured out of here? Absolutely not. And uh, Nigeria, they're killing Christians. Boko right Haram right. there in Nigeria. Uh, it, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Well, let's take a look at uh, North America. All right. Because we live here. Yes, we um, hopefully are on the edge of the pandemic that it would be behind us. But a pastor in Canada went to jail for opening his church. Right. And when I saw, and I know there's a lot of different viewpoints on this, but when I saw that um, the government said, close the churches down, I thought, pastors, you need to read the Constitution. Well, that's right. And so <clears throat> that looks minuscule against getting your head cut off. Well, it does. But it's significant. Here's the significance, and that is, and there's a growing sense that the COVID virus situation has been used or manipulated mm -hmm. 
by government forces, not just in this country, but all over the all world. All over the world to create the environment to usher in the new world order. What a perfect opportunity it's for them. Exact, and people are afraid. You see, people are afraid. Mm -hmm. Just the other day, I saw a woman standing in a line at a hotel. She had on a double mask and a plastic shield, gloves on of a huge plastic sheet between her and mm -hmm. the clerk. And then she had the temerity to tell the clerk that her, the mas her mask was falling down. Mm -hmm. What that was saying is that fear. woman is terrified. Mm -hmm. People are living in fear. Fear has torment, the Bible says. And fear is a great opportunity for a lot of That's things. That's exactly how, the, what do you think the mark of the beast is about? Mm -hmm. It's exactly. about fear. It's about driving fear. And, uh, you know, when, when you find that uh, our friend Dr. Fauci and uh, his female henchwoman, uh, Dr. Burks, they're both up to their eyeballs with Bill Gates and his efforts for globalism, global control. Why is it that Dr. Fauci would say, you know, we're just going to shorten the the curve here, we're just going to reduce the curve in 15 days, mm -hmm. and then it was another 15 days, and then 30 days. Look, they're using this and people's fear. I do believe it's, it's, this pandemic has been a prototype of the way a government can really overreach. Exactly. It's, not the, it's not that the, the, the virus isn't real. No. But what is real is that the numbers that they're attributing to it are dishonest. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm No read. more than 50 to 60% of those that they claim have died of the virus actually did. I've they read are manipulating where, it I've read for where, money and power. I've read where families have tried and tried to dispute a death certificate. Said my loved one did not die of COVID, but that's what was on the death, but we're getting down a bunny trail here. Yes, we are. But I, I do think um, this has been a teaching tool for anybody who's interested in the end times and some of the things that we have discussed here these past few days. I think this pandemic is a, just an illustration of how easily, easily government can take over. And so Dr. I, Burke said this, we have been surprised and how quickly and easily the American people were willing mm -hmm. to submit. I'll tell you another problem, though. I believe that people from 40 years on down have not had good American history teaching. Almost none. And certainly in the colleges, they're not teaching the Constitution. Because if they knew it was in that constitution, they wouldn't settle for this. Okay, but we're going to run out of time. Got a couple minutes here. Describe the rapture. We're going to hear a trumpet? Yes, the trumpet shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise, shall rise first. And we shall be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye mm -hmm. at the last trump. Uh, so, yeah. Will only the Handel's Christians Messiah hear that trump? That message. Will only the Christians hear the trumpet? That I cannot say. It's very likely that only the Christians will hear the trumpet. The Bible also says that every eye shall behold him when he, he comes. Can't. Now, the rapturous, pre-tribulation pre rapturous, uh, do not necessarily believe that that's when the trumpet will sound, mm -hmm. that that's at the second coming. Well, is the second coming the same as the rapture? Mm -hmm. See, those, those things are still at issue. But I want to make this statement. I have had dozens of the most prominent prophetic voices in the country and in American history on my radio program over the past 26 years and have talked with them. Some of them had books on the rapture and so on. Every single one of them believed in, except for one, believed in a pre-tribulation rapture. Mm -hmm. But when I asked them, why do you believe in that? Is there any particular passage or verse of the Bible that you rely upon? They said, no. So I said, well, then why do you believe that? And why do you teach it? The answer, 
I just believe it. You know why they just believe it? Because it's an easy sell, particularly to Americans. We think we're the exception to everything that's ever happened <laughs> in history, and that other people may have lost their lives and been persecuted, but not us Americans. Mm -hmm. We're above it all. Well, I see, I see, I know the scriptures, and I see the rumblings, I see the encroachments yes. upon us in every possible way. Okay, um, we're out of time, but we will continue on the next program. Stay there right now, though, because I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. All right, let me remind you we're offering you this wonderful book. Somebody has put together 199 Promises of God, and I believe they mean more today than ever in history. So you can call an 800 number, 1-800-229-0059, or the address on your screen if you want to write to us. Love getting your letters and your notes. Appreciate it so much. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. You know, it's an uh, exciting time because you can hold the Bible in one hand and watch the news and saying the same thing. But beyond a certain excitement, it's very serious. The question is, are you ready to meet the Lord? You haven't seen anything yet till the great tribulation hits. But are you ready to meet the Lord? That's what's important. You know, heaven doesn't have open borders. There's a pathway to citizenship and you have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior if you want to go to heaven. It's that simple. And we have prayer partners standing by right now. Maybe you've never prayed and asked the Lord to come into your heart, but you can do it right now and someone will help you. Get that number on your telephone screen and be sure you join us tomorrow, friend. Remembering no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.